Computer. T. Earl Grey. Hot. Unable to comply. Replicators are offline. Damn. Good morning. Samsung's One UI has brought a few tasty new things to their settings. I forgot to turn the lights on. Hold on. Ah. That's better. To properly show you settings in One UI, I'm going to pull this black screen up. Ah, there we go. First we'll go into settings, where we are greeted by the new tiles, which have been heavily scaled down from the amount that there were in the last version of settings. Going into connections, we don't see anything new that wasn't there before, other than the newly refined on and off switches. The sounds and vibration menu doesn't bring a whole lot of shockingly new things, although I did find a way to separate app sounds from music if you, say, have your phone connected to a Bluetooth speaker and you get a notification and the music is interrupted by a doo doo dee doo doo There's a way to separate that now, and I'm not sure if it was present in the last version, but even so, we have it now. One thing I also noticed is while you're going back, the menus slide down like a card. Like, psh, psh, psh. instead, of, they go downwards instead of to the side, and I really, I like that. That's nice. Notifications haven't really changed much since the last version. Next, we move on to display. And here we will find the night mode that everybody was so excited about. It's quite nice. You can set it to turn on when the sun goes down or just turn it on or off manually. You also have the ability to turn the blue light filter on as well as night mode for ultimate visual comfort. We still have the four different display modes as well as the ability to go into adaptive display and hit the advanced options and calibrate it a little bit more manually and more granularly, I guess you could say. Font size and style looks a little bit different, a little bit cleaner. You can also now turn on bold font, and that's something I thought was pretty cool. I'm not sure if I'd use it myself, but with certain fonts, I think it could come in handy. Something else I don't remember seeing much is screen zoom. This is, You can do the same thing in, in messages like pinching and zooming, but I'm not sure if this applies to a system-wide thing or not. Full screen apps, the menu is still pretty much the same. You can go and, decide and tell it which apps take full advantage of the 18.5 by 9 ratio. You can, still, you can still change the screen resolution to your liking, although they have cleaned up the interface for that a little bit. Screen timeout's the same, that hasn't changed. Home screen hasn't changed too terribly much. We still have the home screen layout options where you can make it look or act just like an iPhone for those switching over and wanting to stay more comfortable. They also have the home screen grid options like they did before. However, when you pick the smallest one right here, the icons are a little bigger, which is cool. Gives people switching over from iPhones less to be afraid of and us with the options that we've always liked. App icon badges are still pretty much the same. You can choose to have the unread notification number showing or not showing. Down there on the bottom, you also see a show notifications option. And what that means is if there's an app with an unread notification badge, you can actually tap and hold on that app and then it will show you that unread notification, giving you the ability to swipe it away when you are done or when you've acknowledged it, which is pretty freaking cool. Edge panels haven't really changed much. You still have the lights options and the lighting and panels options and so forth and so on. Ah, but the navigation bar. Here's where you'll find the full screen gestures like I'm using here in this vid. The ability to make the navigation bar totally go away and just rely on the gestures. It's pretty pimpin'. Like, it's something I was super excited about as soon as I found out about it with the early pictures of One UI. Moving on to wallpapers and themes, it still just goes to the Samsung Themes app. Nothing new there. Next we have the lock screen. Nothing new here as of yet, except the newly refined user interface. But then we get to advanced features. This is where it starts getting interesting. One thing I found particularly intriguing is reduced animations. This basically makes apps opening and closing, they fade in and fade out instead of sliding or zooming in. So it doesn't turn them totally off, it just makes them fade and kind of like finds a happy medium 
between being totally off and being totally on in a way that's different from going to developer settings and adjusting the animation scales like we've known we could do for years. Motions and gestures have largely the same stuff, although the one-handed mode gesture has gotten way easier to trigger. The trigger area for the diagonal swipe up from the bottom corner has gotten a little bit bigger, so it's easier to put it into one-handed mode now than it used to be. Next we have smart pop-up view. This is something that is new to One UI. Any of these apps that you turn the switch on for, say calendar for example, whenever you get a notification of something that comes from the calendar app, the same icon will pop up for the calendar app as it does when you swipe down from the top corner diagonally to minimize it into a window. Next we have Device Care, formerly known as Device Maintenance. Previously on sneak peeks of One UI, we saw that there was hardly any information given as far as battery usage. That, as predicted, has changed. The battery stats are the same as they always have been. You have access to the same amount of information that you always did. I don't know why Netflix has taken up 22%, but eh, whatever. Point is, you still have access to just as much diagnostic information as you did before, thankfully. The next area of interest is going to be accessibility, surprisingly. On top of some new visibility enhancements like color adjustment and color lens, you see remove animations right there. This does the exact same thing as going into developer settings and turning all of the animation scales to zero. I know a lot of people with Android phones like to go in there and turn off all the animations to make everything just as snappy as possible. And now all you have to do is flip a switch to make that change happen. And in advanced settings, we'll find ways to make both the screen and the camera flash flash when you get a notification. I know iPhones have had this for a long time, and I honestly can't remember if we had this before One UI, but most importantly, now we do. Next is a thing called Direction Lock. This adds yet another way that you can unlock your phone with a series of 6 to 10 directional swipes. This, to me, is more complicated than a fingerprint scanner or a pin or even a pattern, but it's there for those that want it. This next part I really think is going to be super helpful for the elderly who are getting a new smartphone. Time and time and time and again I've seen those who are getting on in years pick up a smartphone and then, you know, mash the buttons like they're actual buttons, like they're supposed to press hard when really all they need is like this really soft tap. And now, with the tap duration setting, you can go in there and actually make it to where it will only respond if they do if they give that long hard press that I'm sure those of you who have, you know, grandparents who have fiddled around with their smartphone or your smartphone or whichever have seen them, you know, they they press hard. Now you can set these to where that's the only way they will receive input, making it a lot less confusing for <coughs> those who haven't quite wrapped their head around the concept of a gentle hand to rule the land, if you will. Next is also a, something similar, but it's a, an ignore repeated touches. So say if you're, I've had it happen to me a couple times, where you do give that feather light touch on one of the buttons, and then it thinks that you double tapped because your finger was so close to the touch screen that it registered two taps. You can make sure that that doesn't happen, although I, I really don't think many people will have a use or a need for this, but still, it's, it's a nice thing to have in case one has a problem with it. Maybe your hand shakes a lot, and you have <coughs> some trouble keeping it steady, and then find that you're always double tapping things. Again, I think this is more geared towards those who are getting on in years and, and have, you know, shaky extremities. But it's, it's a nice thing that, that they added. And now for the Scotties on Patreon. The ones paying $10 a month, those are Stuart Glover, Kyler, and we have a new one! Welcome, William Hunt. Thank you intensely for your support, sir. It is very, 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 very appreciated. Mario Torres, Spidget, Robert Bitter, Jatinder Lal, Anthony Jackson, Eric Price, Stephen Nichols, Nick Hawks, Sim O, Unit Omega, and Christopher Caswell. Pizza. 
I'll stay with my Scotties. My Scotties are my boys. I ride with them. And I'll put that on the generation. And for the Super Beamers, the ones that pay $5 a month, we have Paradox and the Grand Stockton. And last but most certainly not least, we have the Beamers, the ones that pay $1 a month, and those are Josh Utley, Encrypted Bunny, and we have a new one, Mr. Jamie Ives. He's been around since almost day one. Like, he's, he's one of the OGs. Good to have you, Jamie. Thank you very, very much. Rico the 13th, Roman van Rukhuizen, Nicholas Clark, David Larson, and Elixir. In this playlist somewhere over here, you'll be able to find more videos about One UI and all its goodies. Stay informed and stay beaming.